the first time I saw Coco, I'm like, oh, my kid, this is, well, kids, you're going to see me cry for the first time. <laughs> like, that was, I was not prepared for that. Oh, dude. Uh, so, again, keeping with this theme. Moana, for me, is about a great big brown man who left a child in the ocean be, be, because, his, because his favorite piece of fishing equipment is broken. That's true. He did literally try to murder a preteen. Ah! And yet, I'm supposed to have good things to say about these movies. So, no, I am totally with you on the Frozen 2 train. So, the reason yeah. that I had asked you to do this, uh, it feels like three weeks ago, which is really like three days ago, is the Ivy League's uh, decision was going to be made, and I want to talk about it after the decision was made, and they obviously decided to cancel fall sports. They're going to do their fall sports in the spring and figure that out. But since then, the Big Ten has come out with, hey, we're only playing conference games this season, and they did it on July 8th, and there's been some consternation about that. We expect the Pac-12 to follow through. There are varying reports about whether or not the ACC is going to do it, but there's no vote that's been held. The SEC is holding pat or standing pat. The Big 12 is standing pat. What do you see, man? I mean, I, I, I'm not asking you to predict the future here, but like, I, it feels like a slow breakup with a girlfriend. Yeah, I, this all feels really pretty inevitable to me. Okay. And I think it's a, it's a product of some of these administrators and some of these, uh, these conferences being really reluctant to take bold action earlier. Mm. And now you're basically running out of time. I mean, you know, in April and May, the kind of consensus was, hey, um, we just think things are going to get better <laughs> and, and we'll, we'll, we'll make changes if we have to. And now you have to. Yeah. And I, I, looking at the immediate future, I think you're going to begin to see some more movement at the FCS level pretty quickly. Because if, if you have major conferences that are deciding we're not going to play by games um, and you are a team in the Big South or – the big sky or some of these other you know, FCS leagues that depend on that $650,000 check to play the big 10 team in the beginning of the year. And now the Ivies are saying it's not safe. It's going to be really hard for you to keep playing. So mm -hmm. I look at these next couple of weeks, everyone's going to be looking at the SEC and the big 12, but I think they have the political stability and incentives to kind of hold path for a little bit. But if you're the Patriot league, if you're the pioneer league, if you're the MEAC, if you're the SWAC and they've already canceled some of the classic games, yeah, I, I, I think that you're going you're gonna to look to post things to spring or at least cancel things for now relatively quickly. And it's going to get more challenging for anybody that's relying on anybody else for your money right now. To that end, Oklahoma is looking to move its week one game, September 5th, against Missouri State to August 29th, to week uh, zero, as they call it. And they're seeking a waiver. No guarantee that they get the waiver, but we've seen them extend that waiver for, say, Miami, Florida, so that they can help celebrate the 150th anniversary of college football last year. Same thing with Hawaii, because they're trying to get one more game in to help offset some costs. Missouri State plays in that Missouri Valley Conference that is, you know, got a bunch of just powerhouses in it, among them North yeah. Dakota State, right, who's looking yeah. to defend a national championship. And I have been of two minds on this. One, I know the kids want to play football, and ultimately I believe it's their decision whether or not they want to play football. On my end, I'm going, if they don't want to play, then we, we're not going to play. And I can only imagine how Missouri State players must feel about, yo, we're going we're gonna to truck down there to basically get our heads kicked in so you can get six hundred fifty grand in front of nobody, and then we're going to get trucked back at a time when we're not we're not sure you can keep us safe, even as you know testing is what testing is. I I feel the moral outcomes of this are not being taken as seriously as the financial outcomes. Dude, I, I totally agree. Okay. Right? We we look at what's happening with the professional leagues, yeah. the NBA, MLS, women's professional soccer, and you're you're having athletes test positive and have to be removed. And these are athletes that are one highly compensated and two have collective bargaining. So they can literally help negotiate how much risk they're willing to tolerate and be mm. compensated for that risk. And for college, not only do the kids not get any money, the kids don't really get any say in what kind of risk they're going to they're be taking. And what makes this Oklahoma and, and Southeast Missouri situation, the Missouri state situation. So confusing to me is because one, Playing that game isn't going to be profitable anyway because best case scenario, Oklahoma's only getting to sell 25% of their tickets. They, and I'm sure they'll be able to sell those, but the whole point of playing an FCS team 
is to sell out the stadium. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not, you're not going to be able to do that. The game itself is going to be terrible. This is Bobby Petrino's first game. They're going to lose by 50. Um, but the other big thing is that you can't guarantee the same standard of testing, of sanitization, and of reporting between those two different schools. This is actually one of the bigger reasons the Big Ten decided to go conference only is so they can have that kind of uni- unified mandate and control um, what, what the testing is going to look like. So now Oklahoma is potentially coming in here, bringing in a bunch of football players from a school that doesn't have anywhere near as much money, will probably not be testing as often, will probably not be sanitizing as often, and then have them breathe on their football players for two hours. If I was an Oklahoma football player, I would be really angry about that. And, like, and that exact dynamic is why, one, I'd be very surprised that football game is played. And why I would expect the Pac-12 and some of these other leagues to move away from that because – that's an enormous amount of risk for not very much reward. Nobody's really going to complain if you cancel that game. I asked that question of, of reporting and others that I know that are on the beat, that cover the beat, and the thinking there is Joe Castiglione, athletic director at Oklahoma, and Missouri State are in lockstep in how they are testing, Not, but to the point of how are we sure that they are actually going through the same sanitation that – the University of Oklahoma does, and we know that the University of Oklahoma pulls in about $190 million a year, right? That ain't, that ain't Missouri State, right? So I can't expect them to also be able to do what Oklahoma is able to do. I'm also really interested in this idea of how much is it going to, what what is it going to take for public opinion to change this? Because that's what it was, right? When we were able yeah. to shut it down the first time, it was enough people that said, hey, this is actually bad, and if you don't do something, it's going to consume us. To which we had mayors, governors, business folks say, okay, we're going to economically tank ourselves so that we can protect people, which is the right thing to do, especially for a long term. And yet we have much crying, national of the teeth, of which I'm one, but I'm also staying at my house, right? On the yeah. other hand, I'm thinking – CBS Sports uh, Dennis Dodd had this great story about what could happen, and he talked to a University of Illinois professor who ran the, the numbers and said, hey, if you do this, somebody is going to die. And if you have a child that dies on your watch, we're all not coming back from that. Like, you're, you're definitely not coming back from it. But I imagine somebody gets so sick, somebody gets so injured, say October, that we have to shut down football altogether, and then we have to deal with the moral outcomes of, hey, we could have stopped this by just collectively saying, maybe not. And, you know, like you and I, I, I think we need to say this, we, we love college football. That's, that's what yeah. we're here for, right? And yet we're also saying, I want people to be okay. 